Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be building an accordion in React.js. So let's get started. So let's get started. What I'm going to do here is this is called Sandbox by the way. And if you want the finished code, then be sure to check out my Twitter because I'm going to share the link. So what I'm going to do is I want to install a few dependencies before we get started. And right here you can see where it says add dependency. Then I want to install Tailwind CSS. And then I want to install UUID, UUID, and then I also want to install React icons. We're going to be using those dependencies for this project. And what I want to do immediately is this should have reloaded. This should be smaller. Uh, Tailwind is not working. Okay, you know what? I don't want to bother with that. So let me just continue. Let's go ahead and create a new file called data.js. And then we're also going to create another new file called single question.js like so. And then inside here, I'm just going to say export default function single question like so. And then we're going to return an h2 that says single question and then just close it out. This is going to be our component for now. And then in app.js, I just want to import single question at the top. So I'm going to say import single question from dot slash single question. Okay. And then right above this, I want to import use state. So use state from React. So the reason why we need to use state right here is because we're going to create our data array in a moment. And we're going to need to fetch that data locally and then display it. So right, uh, let's go ahead into data.js. And then I think I can close this sidebar so that I can increase this side. So inside here, remember we installed UUID. So I'm going to say import v4 as UUID v4 from UUID. And then I'm going to say export const data, which is the name of my array of objects. And this is going to be UUID v4, oops, like so. And then this is going to have a question property. And then it's going to also have an answer property. And then I just want to grab this and copy it down about maybe four more times. So one, two, three or four. And then for the text inside here, I'm just going to search. I'm going to Google random text generator. And right inside here, I can just grab this. So just copy this so that we have a good amount of text. So let me copy this as the answer. And then you can say Alt and Z, which will just wrap everything. So what drop instead of everything going all the way to the side. And then grab this, cut it out, paste it as the answer. And you can use any text that you want. Okay. I'm just doing this because it's just a bit faster. Paste this in, copy this. Paste it here and finally one more time just grab this and then we can copy this here and then I'm just going to grab the first sentence for each and that's going to be our question. So paste it here at a question mark. Grab this and paste it here at a question mark and then grab this copy at a question mark. And then grab this, copy it here, paste it, add a question mark. And then finally grab this, copy it here and add a question mark. So this is going to be our array of objects. And this is going to be basically our frequently asked questions, our accordion, right? So when you click on the question, then we want to be able to see the answer. So let's go back into app.js and then let's import our data that we've just created. So I'm going to say import data because remember it's a named, uh, it's a named export called data. So we're going to say import data from dot slash data like so. And then right inside here, I'm going to say const, let's say questions and set questions. This is equal to use state. And by default, I just want to pass in the data that we have created. Okay. Now inside here, I want to map over the questions, which is basically the data that I've passed in. So inside this array, right? So I'm going to say, place my curly brackets and say questions.map. And then for every question, then I want to return 
a single question component so single question like so and we should see this on the screen because we have five questions currently so remember we created this component and this is it right here it's currently only returning an h2 that says single question now once we map over this then we need to pass in the remaining properties from our object which is the question that we're returning once we map over the questions array okay so when we map over this then return an object called question so we want to pass in the question here and then the answer as props right so right inside here i'm going to say uh, i'm going to show you two ways where you can do this so i'm going to say that for the question prop then i want to pass in question dot question and this might be just a bit confusing but let me try to explain it so i'm creating a prop called question and prop is short for property and then i'm making it equal to question which is the object that we get back and then we're accessing the question inside that object so what that basically means is that i'm making it equal to the question object that we get back and then accessing the dot question which is this right here which is our question that we want right and then i also want to pass in an answer prop and this is going to be question dot answer like so so we are creating a prop called answer and then we want to access the access the question dot answer from our question object okay now this is one way that we can do it and i'm going to show you that it works so i'm going to save this and then remember these are now props so we can pass them in we can destructure them right inside here and say destructure the question prop and then the answer like so and then now let's structure our return just a bit better where i'm going to be turning a div like so okay and close it out and then inside this div i'm going to have an h2 that says the question which i've destructured so close this out close the h2 like so and look at that we already have the questions on the screen and then i want to have a paragraph that says answer and then close it out as well and we should see this so we have the question which is our header and then uh, the answer now the reason why this is that the text is aligned to the center is because if we go into our styles of css then we have this so you can just remove this and it should go back and it should be aligned to the left okay now what we want to happen is that we don't want to be able to see the paragraph which is our answer by default we want that when you click on the header or when you click on the button which are going to create that's when we are able to see our answer right so let's go ahead and import use state at the top here in our single question component so import use state from react like so and then let's create our state values so i'm going to say const show answer i'm going to call them show answer and set show answer this is equal to use state and then by default i want it to be false right because i don't want this to be able to be shown now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this paragraph just cut it out and then i'm going to say only when show answer is true right so we add in our conditional rendering so only when show answer is true that's when we render the paragraph remember this is the truthy and which evaluates to true if the condition evaluates to true as well so if i set this to true then you should see our paragraphs but we don't want to do that so we want it to be false by default okay now one thing that i want to do is i want to import two icons from react icons remember we installed react icons so i'm going to say import bs plus from coming from react icons forward slash bootstrap and then i want to import fa minus okay which is coming from react icons forward slash font awesome and what i want to happen is i want to add the button right here so i'm going to add a button that says for now i'm just going to say there's a component so f uh, bs plus like so and then of course close up the button component and we should see this on the screen right now what i want to do is just grab both of this and place them in a div okay i'm so used to emmet so place them in a div so that we, when we style this i want this to display as a flex box that's when this will go to the side like so okay and it seems like tailwind doesn't want to work okay guys so what i've done is i've gone into cdnjs.com and then i've copied the tailwind css cdn with this link tag and then i've just copied it below my title tag inside here so inside the public folder inside the index.html and then just copy in the cdn 
like so and then that seems to install tailwind so we can use that instead so let me close this and then let's go back into app.js and let's uh, sorry into single question and then let's just tell this out a bit better so let's have a class name of flex and item center and justify between here which will do that so it takes the button all the way to the end and then inside our app.js then inside this div with a class of app i actually can just remove this and then i'm going to say give this a uh, padding or round of five we're going to have that go inside this give this a class name of text dash xl make it just a bit bigger and margin bottom of five separate that from all of this and then inside okay let me save this and then inside the single questions inside this div i want to have this div, i want this div to have a border okay let's say padding of three all round increase the border let me add one drop okay and then let me let me just say margin on the y axis of one to separate them out just a bit let's say of two separate the margin just a bit let's say border dash two increase it a bit and then let's say rounded dash medium okay that's looking much much better now what we want to happen is that every time that we click on the header on the question here or on the button then we want our answer to show up okay so what i'm going to do is right inside this header i'm going to add an on click okay we can add on click here and then i'm going to pass in an inline function and i'm going to say set show answer into the opposite of whatever show answer is okay so because it's a boolean it, ha it can only be one value so it's either true or false so if it's true what this means is that if it's true then set it to false and if it's false then set it back to true now watch this if i click on this look at that our paragraph gets displayed and if i click on it again it goes away right that's amazing okay so what i want to happen is i want this h2 to have a cursor when i hover over it so let me say class name of cursor dash pointer this is dash pointer like so and then we want to do this on the button as well so just copy this and paste it on the button and it is basically the very very same functionality look at that now what i want to do is i want to add some padding on the paragraph so that it moves inwards so right inside here actually can place all of this inside a div i can have a div here and then close it out here so that i can go inside this div and give this a class name of padding on the x of padding on the x of five to push it inwards and then i can go inside this paragraph give this a class name of text dash base reduce it that's actually the base sorry uh, i'm zoomed in okay i'm zoomed in because the text was quite uh, a bit small so this is confusing me a bit <laughs> sorry for that so text small just to make it a bit smaller okay we can add a font actually we can add a font and to add a font when you're using code sandbox you can go into external resources and then you can say select a font family and i want the font family called taja wall come on this one right here and i can say add font which will add the font right inside here it should but it doesn't so let me specify it so it's called tajawal like so with a fallback of sans serif and let me do this on the body that's because uh, i removed the font I, I removed the class of app so that's why it wasn't displaying but if you place it on the body then this happens okay so this is our font family now notice that this font family is quite a bit small right it's quite small so let me take this i can actually i can just remove this mm, and probably that looks uh then let me see text medium no there's not text medium there's only text small i think we're going to have to work with that let me just zoom out okay this looks extremely small remember that i am zoomed in so that it's easier to see all of this okay so we're going to have that then let me increase this the the, the font size of the h2 slider right inside here let me just say text dash large okay and then i can also say font dash semi bold so that is going to do that and then i can say tracking widest tracking dash widest to increase the uh, letter spacing let me say wide increase the letter spacing or wider 
just a bit just a bit it's much more readable and look at that we already have this now one more thing that i did want to do is every time that i click on this uh, then i want this icon to change right so let's let me just say find where this is right here so we are going to have to remove this actually just cut it out okay and then we're going to have a conditional render we're going to check whether show answer is true right so we're going to we're going to add a ternary operator so we're saying when show answer is true then i want to return a button that says uh, minus so fa minus remember it's a react component okay and then when it is not true then i just want to render my other button of course i need to close it out so close that button so what this means is that when show answer is true meaning when we can see the answer then i want the icon to be a minus icon and then when we can't see the answer then i just want the plus icon to be shown so let's test it out so let's click on this look at that we have a minus icon and then i click on it again then we have a plus icon so let's just increase the font size for this so class name let's say text dash xl okay so let's see so we're going to have that that's looking fantastic now one thing that i did want to show you is remember how we passed this in now javascript provides us with what is called a spread operator and what that means basically is that take everything inside a given uh, data set and then pass uh, all the remaining properties inside so instead of saying instead of doing this one by one what you can do is you can remove this and then this is going to break of course and what you can say is because we're returning an object right then i can create an object here and then i can just say dot 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 which is the spread operator and then just pass in the remaining properties which are in this question object right so this basically means check the object that is called question which is coming from this because we map over it so check this and then pass in all the properties that are in that object so pass in the question and the answer and then obviously we can now destructure the question and the answer right there and the process is basically the same so once I say that, look at that, everything is still looking fantastic and it is working as expected. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you learned something, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. So bye-bye.